Hello, my name is Jalen Avila, and in this video, we are going to discuss some basic scanning techniques for evaluating an OBGYN related complaint. Your probe of choice for this is going to be the curvilinear transducer seen here. Now, you definitely can use the phased array transducer, but the curvilinear transducer is better suited to evaluate the uterus and the ovaries. Now, with regards to technique, make sure that you place a towel overlying the pelvis. And typically what I do is ask the patient if they can tuck in the towel into their pants and underwear. And this is to avoid getting gel on your patient's clothing. Now, I often start, especially when looking at pregnant patients, with the transducer in the sagittal orientation, and we're going to see a couple of structures here. So the first landmark that I'm looking at here is this. This is the bladder, and I'm seeing a uterus over here, and here are some intestines. Now notice I can't see the uterus all that well, so what I'm doing here, if you can notice on my transducer hand, is I'm moving the transducer a little bit more inferiorly to place that bladder more in the center so the sound beam can go through the bladder and have no attenuation and reflection from this bowel to be able to actually reach the uterus a little bit more efficiently. And notice here, we're actually able to see a lot more of that uterus. This is the uterus. Down here, we have cervix. And then we have the vaginal canal over here. And then back here, we have the pouch of Douglas. Now, once you've identified the uterus, go ahead and fan side to side. I will be honest, as a point of care sonographer, it is difficult sometimes to see the ovaries, but what I do is I will turn the transducer into the sagittal orientation once I have the uterus well visualized, and I will then look side to side. Right here, we're actually seeing a bit of ovary, and then we are seeing another bit of ovary on this side as well. This right here is likely the adnexa on this side. Kind of difficult sometimes to tell exactly what is what, especially on a non-pathologic example, but you typically, if it is pathologic, you typically can actually see the ovaries a little bit better. I'm going to take a brief pause here just to let you know that all of our content is on the coreultrasound.com website. That is Ultrasound Podcast, 5 Minutes Sono, Ultrasound of the Week, Clip Bank, and we also have our courses page where we have the Core Ultrasound Fundamentals and Core Ultrasound Question Bank where you have 3,200 questions with feedback, including narrated videos explaining the question. Check it out and back to your video. I do want to comment on this right here. This is a small bit of pelvic free fluid that on this specific patient, this is a patient that's completely asymptomatic. In the emergency department, I likely would not really worry about this too much, but do know that this is some pelvic free fluid and definitely the phrase that I'm much more comfortable with and much more comfortable saying now, clinically correlate when you see that. That was a non-pregnant patient. This is a pregnant patient. And we can see here similar structures, but instead of the uterus being empty, we are seeing a full baby inside of that uterus. This is placenta over here. We have some very likely iliac vessels uh, over here. On this side, you can see that pulsation, nice heartbeat of that fetus over here. Now we will discuss in other videos how to identify an intrauterine versus an extrauterine and how to determine the age of the fetus as well as its viability. So stay tuned for those videos. So that was all using the curvilinear transducer. You definitely can use the endocavitary transducer as well. That's the one that we're seeing here. If you're going to use this one, it's a typically a little more useful in an early pregnancy or in a non-pregnant patient. It is a high frequency transducer and typically will give you a better view. 
Now with this, it is important to make sure that you cover it with a transducer cover specifically made for these endocavitary probes, and then make sure that you are following your local guidelines for cleaning these endocavitary transducers once you're done. Now with this, you notice that there's a bit of a ledge here. This, we're gonna start off with a handle kind of facing down and that gives us a probe marker up. So this right here, this is towards the anterior abdominal wall. This is towards the back. This is cephalad and this is caudad over here. And when you are doing this, make sure that you are adequately fanning anterior or posterior and also side to side to get a full view of that uterus here that we're seeing on this phantom on this simulator as well as attempting to find the ovaries as well. Once you're done with the sagittal view go ahead and change that transducer with a probe marker over towards the patient's right. That's what we're seeing over here. Patient's right's that way and do the same thing. We're going to fan through making sure that we go left to right we can see the adnexa over here as well as up and down anterior and posterior making sure to evaluate all of the structures that you can that was some basics on the scanning technique for the OBGYN patient hope to hear from you soon and happy scanning